<clears throat> this is the ElectroVoice Model 667A Cardioid Dynamic Microphone. I wanted to upload a video of this, at least there's some sound of it. Um, we are currently using the A filter and also the 2 filter. The cool thing about this microphone is that there is a total of one, two, three, four, five. There's five different filter settings that you can apply on the microphone. Now, the only thing that's really weird about this microphone is that the filters and how they are engaged. They're not going to be like its younger brothers, such as the RE series, like the RE20, the RE27ND, or the RE320, where they have switches that are just right here, on the outside exterior of the microphone body and you have easy access to them. All the filters are actually taken care of using banana plugs at the back of the microphone. It's such a oddity. Now, the beauty of this microphone is how the capsule hasn't really changed throughout the years. I accidentally took this apart. It wasn't um, intended, but when I did, I had a better understanding of how this was put together and basically how it was engineered um, to some extent. There isn't really a lot of information about this microphone. There might be a few PDFs or maybe a few articles on forums, but besides that, there isn't a YouTube video actually showcasing its sound. The 667A was used in radio, and it was also probably used in other studios for different kinds of various recordings, but nothing beyond, I believe, the voice. Um, typically you would be astonished because you would see ElectroVoice RE20s on a bunch of things from brass to percussion. But this microphone, I'm not so sure if the 667A was used on anything else but the voice because it was out of reach. Just like the Shure SM5B that I own. It is a very hard microphone to get your hands on and it was because of the price. These were not really... Um, priced for consumers, and they were more they were more aimed for the professional market. So it's very hard to find these microphones. Um, I would say the six six seven A from Electro Voice is harder to find than the five B, as it would be if you were to try to find a five C. But nonetheless, the six six seven A and also the six six eight all follow the same kind of property, um, or I guess you can say. Um, engineering belief. So their design utilizes the same hanger style from uh, the 309A, uh, which is this uh, shock mount. The only difference between the 309A and also whatever this shock mount design is, is that the actual mounting process is completely different as the Electro Voices mounting um, Mounting procedure is actually built into the microphone itself, utilizing this long stem, which is also used for if you have the regular um, clip. And then the body itself is suspended using these very long elastics that allow the microphone to, well, absorb all the, all the bumps and rumble. Now, the only issue with this is that, uh, well, it does increase the weight, and at the same time, the microphone itself already is heavy. The RE20 is extremely heavy. The PSA1 microphone arm from Rode doesn't typically support the weight unless I tighten it, but you know, we, we don't want to do that. We want this to be kind of easy to move around. So the RE20 typically doesn't really come out and I don't really use it much. Um, I mean, I want to start using it a little bit more because of its warmth, but I've always preferred the brightness and also the somewhat satisfying sounds of the Shure SM5B. Whatever it is that these microphones are capable of recording are typically very, very in line with what I like in terms of the sound. Now, this is the 7B, which I put away actually in the case. <clears throat> the 7B is a lot more darker of a microphone and a lot more, it's a lot more rich. And there's a lot of filters that you can use, well, there's two, compared to the RE20, that can allow for a, pres a presence boost and also a low-cut filter if you want to get rid of some of the bass frequencies that can happen during the proximity effect. Um, so 
the cool thing about the RE20 and the 667A slash 668 is that it also utilizes the beautiful, beautiful, oh my god, I can't speak tonight, today, well, it also utilizes the beautiful um, variable D technology. There really isn't a lot of bass frequencies that are caught whenever I come close to the microphone. There is a gain boost because I am getting louder as I come closer, but we don't get that bass boost in my voice, which is really, really cool. Now, the one thing that I really like about this microphone is that at least there is three steps in the low cut filter. And you can choose to be very aggressive and use number three, or you can use number one and keep it flat. You also have the ability to make it brighter by using the B filter, no, the A filter, sorry. And you can also keep it flat on the high end by using the B filter. One of the very bad things about this design is definitely, well, it's kind of tedious. There's also a lot of moving parts and one of them have already broken on me. There's actually these thumb screws here on the uh, mount because the mount for the shock mount actually is uh, like the, the mounting bracket, I guess you can say, that goes around the microphone is, well, it, it, it can be removed. Um, and it's held in place with a thumbscrew. And mine broke when I was trying to remove it. It got stuck. <clears throat> so it came that way when I bought it. It really, really sucks. The other one works fine, but now this one rotates. So that's not fun. On top of that, another very bad difficulty with this is the cable. There's supposed to be two kinds. Yeah, <laughs> there's supposed to be two kinds. There's one that is um, very reminiscent of just like a, a regular USB cable. That's literally what it looks like. I think just a little thicker um, and it's coiled. And then there's this one where it is um, this like braided cable, which believe it or not, looks like the same design that would have been on the 5B. My 5B has been re-cabled with um, some Japanese cable good one at that but the original ones would have had this braided cable now i only have that one braided cable i don't have the um yeah i don't have the the extra that would have came with this i don't know if it was an option or not when you bought the microphone but yeah um there's also another thing about this microphone that's really unique and kind of good and bad but it's the foam so there is a foam that's supposed to be the size of a 5B or somewhat close to it. This was supposed to be a boom microphone. So you would have foam on the inside here, okay? On the inside here that goes around the whole body where the grill is. And you would also have a foam on the front side here. So I'm planning on retrofitting a foam for this, which is going to be utilizing the more modern windscreen that goes on the RE20. It goes on, not inside. Okay, the, the, um, I think it's like WSPL1 or WSPL2. After that, uh, which I'm going to put on the body, I'm planning on retrofitting the Shure SM7B's thick foam, cutting the top off and putting it in front. Because definitely this microphone suffers the most from plosives compared to its more younger brother, the RE20 and RE320 and RE27 and D. So if I do this and I throw away some of my microphone technique and some of the breaths will be caught and I'm not going to care too much and I'm going to start to do my plosives it, it yeah it's pretty bad but I mean if you know what you're doing and you angle this at the corner of your mouth and you're trying to control the airflow as you speak I don't think that you're going to run into any kinds of issues the other beautiful thing about the 667A that um, I find is great compared to its brothers is that it can be very smooth and much more warm if you start to really make this flat. So what I'll do, it's already nine minutes. I want to keep this under 10, but I really can't. Um, I'm also going to be releasing a video where I actually compare this to the 20 and also to the 5 because the 5... The 5B is a little bit more closer in age. Um, this is from 69. I believe my model is specifically from 73, but it is a design that was patented in 
1963 though. So the design itself is old, but I think my model specifically is from 73, I think, from what the eBay ad had listed. So I'll take off the microphone, I'll take off the thing, and I'll make this flat completely. And then you can kind of hear the warmth. And the EQ that's on my voice channel, uh, my art voice channel, is completely the same. The compression and everything is completely the same. We do have um, some boost happening on the OBS side, so just keep that in mind. We're boosting a few dB just so that we're loud enough for you to hear the microphone. And then on top of that, we also do have a compressor here as well just to avoid <laughs> clipping in a limiter. Besides that, we don't have anything else that's coloring the sound. And even if it was, just know that a majority of my more recent YouTube videos utilizing the 5B has been the same. I haven't really done any other changes to the Art Voice channel ever since uh, doing the EQ the first time. So let's take this off and change the filters. And now here is the sound of the Electrovoice 667A cardioid dynamic microphone. Everything here is flat. Just need to check on the graph. They actually do include the frequency response and also the graph here, uh, approximation of course, um, so that you can kind of have an idea of like the curve. But of course for you guys, you're not gonna be able to see that. So let's go to the website. So here, this is kutant.org. Uh, it has been taken down, so just keep that in mind. We do not have access to this website anymore. It was owned by someone who's already in their 70s, and he wanted to pass on the domain for those who are younger. Um, yeah, it's really sad. But thanks to the Wayback Machine, we do have some snapshots. So let's go through this. Talks about the description of the applications of the microphone. And um, the cool thing that I wanted to mention compared to the RU20 not only is, uh, I think, I, I, think I, I mentioned it already, but just in case, it's how light it is. This thing is so light. With the whole assembly, this weighs as much as I think the 5B. So that's the reason why I really like this microphone the most. Um, very low sensitivity to induced hum permits, use close to lights and AC lines, etc. That's awesome. I think the 668 ended up becoming a little bit more isolated and also a lot more protected against hum and noise and <clears throat> all that kind of stuff for boom arm application. But particularly, it's this graph here that we want to look at. We do have an aggressive roll off around, I would say, um, I think it starts at 500 hertz. Um, that's, yeah, as you can see, this like part right here is where it starts to begin on the graph. So at around 500 hertz, we start to get a very huge roll-off. And you have three different choices. One is to keep it flat, and then the roll-off happens at 100 hertz. Or you have a roll-off that happens on number two, which is the original filter that you were listening to earlier. And um, that starts to roll off even more starting at 500 hertz. And then we also have another roll off at number three, which is even more aggressive, which can lower down to almost 15 dB or 10 dB just before we start to hit 100 hertz. And then for A and B, A is basically a presence boost. If anything, it's just a presence boost. So if you want that presence, if you want the brightness on the microphone, you can do so. Uh, or you can keep it flat with the B to make it kind of sound a little bit dark. Now, what's kind of cool about this dark warmth kind of feel when the whole microphone is flat is that it is a lot more closer to the RE20. And as you can see that the variable D technolo technology is not, an, it's not a new thing. It's been here for ages, been here for decades. Um, there's the polar pattern few things about the frequency response again in terms of its excitement it can't excite anything beyond 10k so the resolution on this is not really that high 
Uh, but the big thing, the big thing is impedance. This is something that really <laughs> nobody really thought about, I think. Um, that's the really cool thing is that we do have different kinds of impedance. There isn't really a big change in the amount of output gain, but I mean, honestly, the fact that you can impedance match is pretty cool. We have 50 ohms, 150, and 250 ohms. Compared to a driver that's on a headphone, 600 ohms is hard to drive on a microphone from what I've noticed, and also from my Art Voice channel, if I increase the impedance on the Art Voice channel, it actually increases the output gain. So keeping it at 150 is consistent, especially if we're doing the tests. Since the Shure SM5B is also 150 ohms, I thought that it'd be smart just to keep it at that. Um, yeah, but besides that, um, yeah, I don't have the foam anymore. The body is made out of complete metal, and it is very light. The Cable is de debatable if this thing's going to survive another few decades, but in my hands, I'll make sure of it. And then the shock mount is honestly effective. Seems as though that it works good enough. Of course, there's going to be always rattle because there is no foam on the inside. So that's something, uh, hmm, there's, there's a little bit of a design flaw here. And of course, it's been changed with the RD20, where they started to include foam on the inside of the body. So that way, at least the capsule isn't just floating inside of a metal carcass. And then, of course, here's the wiring diagram for the filters. You don't want to be changing GNC. I think that's ground in common, so don't plug or unplug that. Um, but you would want to change A and B, 1, 2, 3, and also 50, 150, and 250. These options here, again, correlate with what is on the graph. So A is going to be your brightness boost, B is going to be flat, and then 1, 2, and 3, respectively, 1 being flat, 2 being a little bit of an aggressive curve um, happening on the bottom, and then we also have 3, which is a more aggressive curve uh, for the um, low-cut filter or high-pass filter. And then we have the ohm or uh, impedance changes that we can go from 50 to 250. So I have it on 150 at the moment. And as you can see here, here's the microphone inside of the foam and also the back part here that can be removed. Here's that little coiled cable that looks like a USB cable or a headphone cable that looks, it just looks really, really cheap. But yeah, this microphone is amazing. I honestly love the way it feels. And uh, my serial number is like 700, 7,308, uh, 7,308 7, is my um, is my serial number. And as you can see, here's the back here. I couldn't really zoom in, so I'm really sorry. But yeah, this is such an amazing microphone. They talk about a little bit of the engineering and all that kind of stuff here and how it ended up evolving into the 668, which um, I think is just like the same microphone, but just, just a little bit better in terms of its, uh, I think, either sensitivity, efficiency, or the way that it can actually take care of hum and noise. But for something from... <laughs> For something designed in 1968, this thing really has done such a good job at living. Okay, may I just put it that way? It's lived this long, and I'm happy that it's lived this long. It's lived so long that it's in my hands, and I'm going to make sure that it survives even longer under my roof. So, I'll be using this microphone quite a bit, and it's going to be mainly because I just love the old sound. Apologies again that this is a 17 minute video, but at least we have the audio out here on the internet. And that's really honestly all that I can ask for, for this old gear. I'll be trying to use this for streams whenever I am streaming on AJ Moore's um, tournaments, because he does also use an Electro voice, so I was thinking, well, it would just be befitting. Um, but on top of that, not only did I want to use an Electro voice microphone, I could have used the RE20, but it's just because there's nothing, there's nothing of this microphone out there. There isn't a lot of voices speaking into this microphone. It's just like, there's like one audio clip of the guy on the website. And again, you're a legend if you know how that recording goes. But it's just like, this is the Electro Voice Model 667A Cardioid Dynamic Microphone. Like, I just love the way he says it, but I just wanted more. And the same thing happened for the 5B. There's maybe now countless hours of the 5B's action on the internet on Twitch, and I hope that it's because I'm doing it. Uh, I know that there's a lot of radio stations, like internet online radio stations, that are utilizing this microphone and stuff, but in all honesty, I just wish there was a lot more. So, again, that's going to be, hopefully to me, or up to me, or, uh, well, down to me, um, because, you know, I don't know if there's other people that use the microphones that I own, but 
either way, if someone owns these, get the sound out there, please. There's a majority of us who have either been looking forward to this or will forever forget the sound. And I think that for marvels of uh, of engineering such as these two, which have been over engineered basically to uh, to to work in the professional market, even though a majority of us, even me, like wouldn't have been able to have access to these because these were not really these are not really sold to to general consumers. These would have been for radio stations, well, especially the five B for FM and AM radio. A little bit later on in its life, uh, well, life uh, production run. And then for the 667A, this would have been used more for the, yeah, it would have been more used for the professional market rather than it being used for the consumer market. So it would have been really, really hard for you to get your hands on this back then. But now that, you know, eBay exists and there's going to be possibly a lot of radio stations closing down uh, just strictly because, like, the internet is just that huge now. There's podcasts, there's probably online radios, like the stations are going to have to either change something. And what is it that they're going to be changing? Most likely the gear. I got my 5B from a station that closed down. And then this 667A uh, most likely came from a radio station or something in LA. So with all of that being said, it's already 20 minutes. I'm done. We got the flat frequency response. We also have the a filter and the two filter engaged um, earlier in the video. I'll do like sound things, comparing them to um, these two beasts together, and then also comparing it to the, well, something closer to its era or decade, which will be the 5B. So take care, be safe. I love the way that this sounds. Um, it sounds different on different kinds of headphones. So just keep in mind, I am using K60s, which are also coming from around the same age. Um, these AKGs have like they have low end okay don't get me wrong they have bass and they have low end but it's definitely rolled off um because of the well because of the casing and also the seal that is not really that good anymore so i don't know how this is going to sound on youtube because of youtube compression and i don't know how this is going to sound for you guys depending on if you're listening on a phone on airpods or on um 50 dollar headphones or whatever or speakers but i really hope that you guys can enjoy what is almost seven decades. This is, again, I think, again, okay, the patent from 1963. I might be wrong, but this microphone is so old. And um, whether it not be seven decades or five decades old, I'm very happy I own one. I feel very blessed I own one. But at the same time, I really hope that this gets a lot of airtime because it totally deserves it. So take care, be safe. I'm going to stop the recording. OBS has been giving me lots of issues lately, and I don't know.